Welcome! In the previous episodes, we learned how to get started with the camera. Now, we have set everything to make the best images for AMPI recognition, but how to give the signal to the camera to create an image? It's simple, we will use the triggering function. If we navigate into the Advanced Setup Event Manager page, that is the section where the triggering will take its place, or at least setting-wise. We have numerous methods to give a trigger signal to the camera to make images, but we will cover in details the two most common options. The first, which every type of wider camera has, it is the plate finder trigger. The plate finder trigger itself, also how the name indicates it, is responsible for finding the plates within the live stream. It runs in the background and analyzes the frames, and when it finds a plate in one, it will take an image and send that image to the EMPR module, where the already installed engine will read the characters and give back the proper result. To set it up, we only have to make a few steps. First, select it by clicking on the little plus sign under the primary source section. Then, the live stream of the selected sensor will appear with a yellow rectangle inside the stream. This rectangle, called Region of Interest, ROI for short, which is the place where the camera should look for the plates. The best is to set this region of interest for the most proper place, where the plate most likely to appear. Important to make this region of interest fairly big enough to have the camera enough time to capture the plate within this region when the vehicle is passing through. After it is set, just click on the save at the plate finder section and then go back to the top of the page and save the full configuration by clicking on the save button at the top as well. If you wait some time and navigate back to the plate finder setting, you should see below the live view an automatic parameter called average runtime, which will be showing an FPS number. This number is calculated by the trigger itself and indicates that how fastly it is running on the stream. And when you see the FPS counter is not zero, the plate finder is working correctly and will generate the best images for the AMPR process. If it is show zero, you might need to recheck the configuration. The next trigger, which we will discuss in details, is the brand new laser trigger. The laser trigger uses a built-in point laser within the device, which is pointed near the middle of the live stream image. The laser will see where the camera is directed and will emit a laser beam towards the road. Once a vehicle casts this beam, the camera immediately will know that there is a vehicle, whether it has a license plate or not. Since it is a reliable hardware-based trigger, it has some limitations as well. We highly advise to use the laser trigger when installing the camera on a gantry above the monitored lane, and not exceed 18 to 20 meters distance from the camera to the road surface. Also, make sure that the camera tilt angle is no less than 25 degrees, otherwise the laser signal could be lost due to bad reflections. Also, when the weather is not optimal, let's say there are heavy rain and puddles on the road surface, you might need to consider setting up a backup trigger, for example, the plate finder. So let's watch out for that. When setting up the camera in a transversal position, due to the tilt and pan angles, the laser beam and the distances need to be lowered. So as an example, if the camera placed in 6 meters high and tilted down 25 to 30 degrees and turned towards the road about 10 to 15 degrees, the reference distance should not exceed 16 meters. If the reference distance is above that value, you might get false triggers and lower trigger health, so you might need to consider using a different trigger source. If you place the camera in a lateral position, we highly advise to not exceed 12 meter distance from the road to the camera. If the distance is above that value, the trigger will produce more false triggers and maybe the laser will not be the most effective triggering in that case. About this setup, we need just a few steps like in the case of the plate finder trigger. First, add the laser trigger at the primary source section. Then, check if the current distance value is less than the previously discussed values and hit the calibrate button two times. This will set the reference distance value to a fixed value. And if the trigger health parameter climbs above 90% and stays there, you can proceed to hit the save at the laser trigger section then hit the save button on the top of the page as well. 
This will save the settings for the laser-based triggering. Once the current distance is showing a lower value than the reference distance, the camera will get an indication that there is a vehicle which broke the laser beam and it will immediately take an image, forwards it to the AMPR engine and reads the license plate, if the vehicle is having one of course. Let's talk about the possible scenarios. If the camera monitors approaching vehicles, the trigger mode should be set to rising edge. With that, the image will be taken once the laser beam is started to break. With that, the front part of the vehicles will be present on the image, which will be taken to the AMPR engine for reading. If we monitor leaving vehicles, the trigger mode should be falling edge. The falling edge mode will be taking images before the trigger signal is going to end. With that, the images will be taken from the rear side of the vehicles. Of course, apart from the plate finder and laser trigger, we have other triggering methods as well, just as like the software trigger, which is sending one immediate trigger to the camera. It is usually combined with ground induction loops or external weight in motion systems. Once the vehicle reaching the induction loop or weight in motion sensor, the system sends the camera this software trigger and will take the image in the best position possible. Then we have the scheduler trigger with what we can give an exact time frame to the camera when to take images down to seconds. Next, we have the GPIO trigger where we can set up a connection to third-party devices to the camera or a junction box which handles other external general input-output trigger sources. Then, we have the radar trigger. When you buy an external radar module to your wider camera, this trigger will contain the settings for your radar module. And the last one is the motion detector trigger, which is able to trigger the camera on a motion-based method. It has three differently customizable trigger methods. Once we set it up the best trigger for our installation, the camera will start taking images and will generate events with the help of the already installed engines. But what to do with these such called events and what does it mean exactly? In the next episode, we will cover everything which you need to know about the events and event handling. So stay tuned!